hello ladies and gentlemen <laughs> good morning good afternoon and good evening to you i'm so excited to welcome you all to the third edition of this week's extra speed life technical analysis session and in fact today promises to be an exciting one as we approach the second half of this week and i do encourage us all to stay tuned in so that we do not miss out on the valuable ideas and how we are expected to manage our current position and as well practically position ourselves for the next move today um, before we go into the details i would like us to quickly confirm in the comment section if we are good to go let me know if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear without distortion please let me know in the comment section and if the other way if it's happening the other way too as well please let me know so that i can make the necessary adjustment to make your experience out there a better one so i will be taking some couple of seconds while i load up my comment box while i also look forward to your feedbacks in the comment section and thank you very much as you do so. So, how many people are we having on board today? We are not as many as expected. What's happening in the house? Um, are you there? If you are there, please let me know. Let's um keep the energy going here. I can see you, Marshall6690. Um, I see you, Carrie. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around. Is anyone else in the house? Please, let's see some highs. Let's see some good mornings. Let's see some greetings. Let's keep the energy in the house um, um, pumping and good to run through the West District in session. So I still look forward to some positive energies in the house. And thank you very much as you do so, guys. <laughs> <laughs> same here i'm seeing here carrie as well <laughs> let's um see um in the next i can see lam gary is trying to join in okay Ricky says hi can you explain where to put my stop loss on new trades and why we put it there thank you very much okay okay i will look at that um after we take some um, on a particular position today so i would i will attend to that for you all right and um who else do we have here again who else do we have here who else do we have here please i can see cannabis is trying to log in are you going to make some comments i know you guys are there <laughs> okay anyways i think um with this um uh, feedbacks here from kari um Rike, let's take this as a confirmation that we are all on the same page that i'm well heard and um, we can good to go. Oh, cannabis! Thank you very much. I love you. <laughs> Nine zero two. Hey, thank you very much for that feedback. Okay, so it's on this note. I welcome you all once again to yet another promising edition on the Extra and Speed Live. And my own name is Sheriff Daramola. And for the next one hour thereabout, I will be a host as I will be taking you on a trading journey where we shall be evaluating the financial market from both technical and fundamental perspective with the utmost intent of identifying trading opportunities ahead of the New York session today. And since the beginning of this week, we have been monitoring um, four financial instruments, which has been part of our watch list, we, and including the US All Sport, the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. We also have the USD JPY and the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Sport. And in fact, um, so far this week, we've done fairly well, except for the USD JPY, which is still struggling to gain some traction so far this week. So in preparation for today, I have done a comprehensive analysis on all of these assets. And I'm in fact excited to share my new ideas with you as we prepare for today. Uh, so I encourage you all not to 
to stay out stay tuned in so you don't miss out on what we will be talking about today and for those of you who are joining us for the first time i never forget you guys you guys are wonderful glad to have you around with us this morning and i do know you may be wondering what is this all about or what is it that we really do here on this platform well as technical traders we usually gather here on a daily basis coming together as a community to engage in follow-ups and reviews of our current trading positions in preparation of the new york session and my aim here is to equip you all with the knowledge and skills necessary to make informed trading decisions independently and in fact the more time you spend with us in this community the better you will become at comprehending our analytical approach uh, which will eventually make you to be able to use the information to enhance your own trading decisions and strategies so once again i do welcome you all on board and I encourage you to actively engage in the comment section um i see you lam gary good morning to you lam gary trust you're doing well i can see you're asking for us all sure we are going to be taking on the us all sports in a moment so i encourage you to stay tuned in so you don't miss out on that one so with that being said here we shall be diving right into the business for the day and as usual it is our practice here to um, indulge in the economic events that are likely going to be influencing the sentiments in the market today and um, by monitoring the economic calendar we tend to pinpoint potential correlations between key economic releases and technical um, specific technical patterns on the chart hereby giving us valuable information and most importantly timing to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move prior during and even after this economic event and so far this week based on the asset we have been monitoring we have focused on economic features from both the united states and the japanese economic docket though we do not have um, high impactful events so far this week but we've had some uh, buckets of impactful event meteor economic features which as um, one way or the other affected traction in price one of them is the bank of japan's monetary policy meeting minute which was published um, earlier on monday and then on uh, uh, later on that day, we had speeches from Bostick and Cook from the United States Fed officials. We also had some data coming in from the housing sector as well, which um, did not really do uh, as um, expectedly well. Then yesterday, Tuesday, March 26, we were looking forward to the durable goods order, which obviously gave us an insight into um, the manufacturing sector of the United States. And um, surprisingly, the data came in beyond market expectation, as we saw 1.4%, 2.2%, 0.5%, and 0.7%, respectively, for the durable goods order, and that for the excluding defense, excluding transportation, and of course, excluding aircraft and this for us was a uh, very good signal that the u.s economy continues to be resilient um, especially in the last couple of months and this may likely fortify the value of the u.s dollar especially in this era where there is an indecision as regards to the appropriate path for the um, interest rate decisions for this year then looking forward, um, we saw the um, housing price index, though that data did not come in um, pretty good as it came in at a deficit of 0.1%. Then for today, Wednesday, um, 27th of March, we are going to be looking at only one impactful event today, which is coming up much more later in the day, I think in about 12 to 13 hours from now, and that is the speech from... Um, Christopher J. Wallace, um, who is a member of the Board of Governors of the um, 
Federal Reserve System. So it will be giving a speech later today and everyone in the market will definitely be looking forward to what it will be saying as um, um, whatever it says today will be giving us an insight into the um, monetary policy of the Federal Reserve and of course will also give us an insight into the economic outlook and potential uh, price action trajectory for um, the Fed. So we look forward to this event. I encourage us all to mark out these timings on our calendars so that we can be around to maximize our the uh, maximize the price movement uh, following the event. So with this said, let's dive right into the business. And I do hope Lam Gary is still around. So the first asset we are going to be looking at this morning, as usual, is going to be the US all sports. And so far this week, we've done pretty well on this assets as we've had um, both buying and selling opportunities, as you will see here. For the sake of um, educational purposes and clarity, especially for those of us who missed out on yesterday and Monday's um, technical analysis session, let's run through what really happened at the beginning of the week that led to the decisions we made. So right here on the one hour time frame after monitoring the character of price action since um, the beginning of the week, we saw how price action was oscillating just right around our key level at the $81 area. And this resulted into a range bound structure where price action was confined within the $81.10 level and the um, $80.70 area to emphasize the prevailing uncertainty in the market at that time. And you know how we do it in this community. Whenever we have a range bound structure, we want to exercise patience and wait for market participants to make a final decision, which will either come in the form of a breakdown of the support line of the range to give us an opportunity to sell or the breakout of the resistant line of the range to give us an opportunity to buy. So with this simple understanding in mind, coupled with the fact that price action trading above our key level will welcome buying opportunities, we positioned ourselves above this um, levels to capitalize on our first buy position for the week. And remember, we also had it, um, more positions, especially at the breakout of the $81.70 level to maximize the potential of this bullish move. So for the first half of this week, we've done pretty well on this particular asset. Now, after moving our stop losses, we were taken out of that buy positions with a minimum of about 150 to 200 pips thereabout. And during our live session yesterday, we begin to observe the inability of sell buyers, sorry, to break out of this high at the $82.25 level, which resulted to some series of lower highs, giving us signs that sellers may likely be gaining some momentum, which could result into profit taking activity, reflecting on the chart as a retracement move. And I did emphasize here yesterday that for those of us who love taking counter trend opportunities, or short-term trading opportunities, you might want to be joining the breakdown retest of the $81.70 level, maybe into our key level or that ascending trend line we have right down at the $80.50 area. So I told us all that I will not be selling as I will want to see how price will react to this structure. And if you remember, we said if we can see a reversal setup around this area, then we will be keen on joining the uptrend move. No, this is yet to happen. So as we saw price continue to drop here, I had the privilege of joining right below the $81 area and adding one more at the breakdown of the $80.70 level. And as of this morning, after moving my stop losses accordingly, I have been taken out of all my sell positions at this point. And I do hope you've been taken out too 
as well. But if you still have your sell positions intact, I would encourage you right now to move your stop losses and secure those positions as we may likely be seeing some bullish traction happen today. So with that being said here and with a well secured position on our chart, let's see how we are going to be managing this current market dynamics as we prepared for today's trading session. So after being taken out of all our positions yesterday, um, the, um, we saw price action drop significantly to the downside and this decline coincides with a modest rebound in the US dollar and a mixed response to the disruption of Russian refinery capacity due to recent Ukrainian attacks. Additionally, we saw yesterday an unexpected swelling in the US crude stock park which contributed to the loss in price of US oil as well. Um, the crude oil inventory surged by approximately 9.3 million barrels for the week ending March 22nd, contrasting with the 1.5 million barrels decline reported by the API the previous week. Now, economists are anticipating an increase of around 1.2 million barrels in the uh, um, during that week but um, as you will see the figure came in at a phenomenal high at 9.3 million and what does this simply mean it shows that um, supply is um, higher than demand and when there is high supply over demand our simple economy says that um, price is likely going to drop due to the surplus and availability of all commodity in the market and this has re um, resulted in this strong bearish momentum we saw yesterday which for me i'm considering it to be a retracement of that bullish momentum um so uh, besides this i still believe that the path of least resistance for us all is still to the upside especially if we consider the geopolitical tensions particularly in the Middle East and the Russian Ukraine region, uh, which may influence oil prices to rise further or increase from this point. So, um, in anticipation of today and looking at the current structure, we're also going to be taking into consideration that market participants will be looking forward to the EIA crude oil stock change reports, which is coming up later today, for cues on how to manage the current position. But while I was looking at the technical structure this morning, I'm beginning to notice something interesting happen on this chart as we saw uh, by pressure resume around this ascending trend line we identified on the four hours time frame. So for the sake of clarity, let's run into the four hours time frame to see what things are looking like from an holistic standpoint. And for those of us who were part of our first edition this week, remember that after we consider the character of price action in the last four, three, four weeks, it was obvious that price action has been bullish. And in fact, we have a couple of ascending trend lines to buttress the strength of the buyers at this point. However, our major trend line still remains here, as you will see. And you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community as long as price remains above the ascending trend line we shall continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying that asset now with the situation we have here and looking at what has been going on in the last 12 hours you will see that price action was oscillating just exactly around that ascending trend line which beautifully shares a confluence with the $80.50 level. Now for me this is a clear sign that buyers may likely want to respect this ascending trend line one more time as you will see the last 12 hours as um, reflected continue by pressure around this area and considering the fact that this area has a strong memory for buying power as you will see here every attempt by the sellers to break through has always been met with strong resistance from the buyers and in fact if we go into as far back as um, two weeks ago you see how that same area has been a strong 
buying niche. So due to the buying power around this area, I will still continue to hold on to the bullish bias. And this is from a technical standpoint. And of course, looking at the fundamentals, judging from the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East and the Russian Ukraine region, um, this may stabilize the price of oil at this point. So with this scenario here, I would like to see price continue to climb to the upside, breaking out of our key level at the $81 area to continue the uptrend move. However, if the $80.50 level and the ascending trend line is breached, and broken to the downside, then we can start considering selling this asset today. So with this information we have gathered here on the four hours time frame, let's scale back down into the one hour time frame, which is our execution time frame to make a decision going forward. So as it is right now, following this impulsive move to the downside, you will see that the last um, three to four hours has seen continued buy pressure around this area, which for me is a sign that buyers may likely be pushing price further to the upside. So as a result of this, I already had a buy position triggered at the breakout of the $80.70 level. So we shall be looking out for more opportunities to buy at the breakout of our key level, which is the $81 area. And then if price continues to find new highs, we'll look at the $81.70 area to maximize the potential of this bullish move. And mind you, we have another level at the $82.25 area looking out for more opportunities to buy this particular asset. So um, the part of list resistance at this juncture after considering how market participants are reacting to both the fundamentals and the technical aspects, I would look forward to more opportunities to the upside. However, if um, it so happens that price action breaks down and breaches that ascending trend line, then we can now start considering um, considering selling opportunities. So, and look at how beautifully that ascending trend line right here and the $80.50 level shares a confluence. So a breakdown retest of the structure will be welcoming selling opportunities for us. And if price action goes ahead to break down the $80 mark, then we will be looking at adding more sell positions to our existing trade. So you would agree with me that we are at a crucial juncture where that area around the $80.50 level and that ascending trend line will be a key determinant in guiding our trading decisions for today. So I do encourage us all to mark out the structures on our charts as we will be needing them as a reference point to guide our trading decisions for today. And so to make things much simpler for the highs to, to validate, we have our center of focus today is between the $81 level and the $80.50 area we are depending on the direction of the breakout will give us an idea of where price is likely going today. So let's keep this in mind and continue to monitor price action around this structure. So this is my simple view on the US all spot for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section or if you need any clarifications whatsoever, drop them in the comment section. Trust me, I'm here and willing to be of help in that regard. Is Lamgari still around? Please let me know in the comment section. Rick K, are you still around? Uh, let me know if it's time for me to just quickly give you a brief of how to manage your TP and stop losses target. So let me know if you're in the comment section, then I'll attend to that quickly. So I will be taking the next five, 10 seconds off to see if there are any more questions before we dive right into the next asset on our watch list. Stay tuned in guys.
All right, so I see you, um, re-cases is around. All right, so before I go into the details about stop losses and TP targets, it's very important for us to also note that um, there is individual risk tolerance. So as traders, we have different risk tolerances and financial situations. And of course, a stop loss level that works for one trader may not be appropriate for another. So it's crucial for individuals to assess their own risk tolerance and set stop losses levels accordingly. So that's why I refrain from providing specific stop loss levels for several important reasons. And um, so instead of giving you stop loss levels, I usually give you a zone or an area using our key levels levels and trend lines to manage this idea now in this case scenario where our our entry point let's say for instance is around the 81 dollar level where we are looking at buying above uh, the structure in this kind of scenario you do want to be having your stop losses has pre below the previous levels now if you look at this chart here the previous levels we have here is 80 dollar 70 cent area and of course, eighty dollar fifty cent level. Now, if we look at the distance between the entry point and where um, we are looking at here, so we have a minimum of about thirty to thirty two pips here for the stop loss here, or this one here at forty five to fifty pips thereabout. Now, depending on your portfolio size, for instance, you can compare one who has a portfolio size of a ten thousand dollar account and that of a $500 account. Now, someone who has a $10,000 account can afford to have enough breathing space for price action to move around and still maintaining a specific small size of his portfolio as risk, like one to 2% of his portfolio size and can go as far as having a stop loss of about 50 to 80 pips. Now for someone who has a small account of let's say 100, 500 pips, you know you definitely cannot um, have that huge wide range of stop losses. So in that case scenario, you might want to be looking at the closest one uh, which might not be enough room for price action to move around. So that's about 30 to 35 pips stop loss in this case scenario. So what I'm simply saying here is that your level, the levels you see on the chart is guiding where your stop losses and TP targets will be. Now, it now depends on what you have, your individual differences that will not determine, okay, I'm going to use this level or I'm going to use this level due to my own peculiar situation. Now, the same thing also applies to TP target as well. So for instance, if you are buying from the $81 area, you can see we have multiple levels, which I did identified earlier. We have one at the $81.70 area. We have one at the $82.25 area. Now we have different types of traders. We have scalpers, we have day traders, we have um, positional traders, we have swing traders. So this variety of um, range of traders have a level which they look for as their TP target. Now, for someone who trades with a swing trader, you know that their TP target will be bigger than one who is a scalper or a day trader. Now, depending on your own approach to trading, you can use all these levels here as your TP target, depending on what um, uh, what type of trader you are. So you can see we have multiple levels here. You can choose one of them and you can as well try to maximize your TP target by having it at the maximum point. So this is how we you can use the levels and structures we identify on the chart as a yardstick to guide where you want to be putting your TP target and stop losses. So Rike, I hope I answered your question there. So I had to make it a little bit much simpler for you to get. But if you don't get it, please let me know where you getting things mixed up. And trust me, I am willing to be of help in that regard. So I hope you're still around. Please let me know what your feedbacks are. And um, I see you, Benny1234. Glad to have you around today. Good morning to you. Uh, buy at 81, sell at 7995. Okay, all right, no problem. So, in the absence of no further questions, I want to assume that we are all 
on the same page. Okay, you're welcome, Rike. Glad you found that useful. So, in the absence of no further questions, we shall be moving on to the next financial asset on our watch list for today. So, I encourage you all to stay tuned in. So the next asset we are going to be looking at today is going to be the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. And on this asset so far this week, we've had a choppy market conditions, which um, further uh, emphasize the level of uncertainty that has gripped this market. Now, remember at the beginning of the week, price was initially confined within the 80, 18,370 level and the 18,320, which helped us to capitalize on that first sell position as we took advantage of the breakdown retest of the support line of that range at the 18,320, though the first sell position did well, but the second one um, went into break even and the third one went into a stop loss. Now, after following this um, range bound structure, we saw our price action expanded that range into the 18,220 area. So now we have a wider range to work with and of course is for the emphasize the prevailing uncertainty in this market now this old choppy market condition is not getting to us as a surprise as you will remember that since last week or two weeks ago i have emphasized here in this community that price action is at an all-time high and when we have price at an all-time area it usually takes time for price to acclimatize to that zone before it continues the uptrend. And this is due to fear that um, um, price may crash from that area. So major key players who had capitalized on that uptrend may at some point want to start taking some profit off the chart, which will reflect on the chart as retracement move, choppy market conditions, or even consolidation faces and this is exactly what we are seeing on this chart right now so following um this old sell position which was taken out on tuesday we also had the privilege of joining an uptrend move remember on monday we identified this descending trend line here where we stated that a breakout or breach of this descending trend line will welcome buying opportunities and of course this triggered a buy position had the breakout of the 18,320, we had a couple of more buy positions before the sell pressure began here yesterday. So we were able to get out of that buy position with a reasonable amount of profit. Remember how we do it in this community. Whenever price action moves significantly in our favor, you move your stop losses. And if you had done so, you must have been taken out with a minimum size of profit or a worst case scenario break even and we saw the situation happen here yesterday price drop into the downside in fact we I, I missed out on this opportunity but i was able to capitalize on this uptrend seen here on this chart as price action climbs back above that descending trend line so so far this week this descending trend line here has been playing a major role in guiding our trading decisions now for those who had capitalized on this buy position at the breakout of that descending trend line right at the 18,270 well done to you as we saw a breakout and retest of that particular level so at this point in time i will be asking you to move your stop losses back to the entry point securing this current buy position while we look out for new opportunities if price action goes ahead to break out of those levels at the 18,320 as you will see here we have the 18,350 and of course we have the 18,390 all of which will be welcoming more buying positions if price action breaks out of them so 
On the US Tech 100, it's not that complicated at all. It's a simple trading setup we have here. We continue to use that descending trend line as a yardstick to guide our trading decisions for today. So as long as price remains above this descending trend line, we feel very comfortable in our buy positions. Now, the only condition that will make us sell the US Tech 100 today is for price to drop back below the descending trend line. Then at this point, we will be back within the seller's territory. And of course, um, we will see price action take out the lowest point for this week, which is at the 18,220 to join a decline to the downside. So I'm only looking out for a breakdown retest of this structure before I can start considering selling. And the reason why that is very simple. Remember, this area here since the beginning of the week has been a strong um, demand zone for market participants. As you will see, every attempt by the sellers to break through has always been met with strong resistance from the buyers. So if price can break down and retest the structure, then I'm of the opinion that sellers are back in the game and they may likely be taking this price to the downside. So it's a simple trading setup we have here. So I encourage us all to mark out this descending trend line as it's playing a major role in guiding our decisions for today. So this is my simple view on the US Tech 100. Very short analysis. I hope I made myself very clear. If you have questions, let me know in the comment section. I will take the next 5-10 seconds as always, see if there are any questions before we move on to the next assets on our watch list. Stay tuned in guys and use that time to mark out these levels on your chart. All right, so in the absence of no questions, let's take this as a confirmation that we are all on the same page. So in that regard, we shall be moving on to the next asset on our watch list. Stay tuned in. So the next asset we are going to be looking at this morning is going to be the USD JPY. And well, the USD JPY saw, uh, we reintroduced the USD JPY to our uh, watch list this week after about four, four weeks break. And during that four weeks, we were looking at the GBP USD, but this week I saw some interesting setups on the chart where I decided that okay, fine, we could look out for trading opportunities based on the current structure. Now, um, at the beginning of the week, we saw how price action was showing showing signs of um, um, resilience as price continues to maintain traction above the ascending trend lines we identified on the higher time frame. Now, looking at the structure, remember we started our analysis from the daily time frame, I think, but I would like to lay emphasis on the four hours time frame here after considering the character of price action in the last couple of weeks. And one thing we were able to come up with here is the fact that price action has been very bullish. And to emphasize the strength of the buyers here, you can see we have a couple of ascending trend line which are supporting 
supported this bullish momentum. Now, something interesting happened um, in the last 24 hours here as we saw price action break down that ascending trend line for the first time in two weeks. And with the situation here, you can see price action broke down, came back to retest structure and look at what we have here. Though this candle is still running and it still has about um, 2 hours 15 minutes left for it to close. So we can still say it's an engulfing bearish candle yet since it's still active and running. And it's not until when it is closed that we can say it's truly a bearish engulfing candle. In fact, in the next two hours, we'll see this candle roll all the way up, giving us a hammer candle to work with. Now, in addition to that trend line, we were able to identify our key level just right around the 151.200 area. And if you look at the structure closely, you will see how this level had played a major role in determining the direction of price action. Now look at what happened here. It was a buying niche at some point. It was a resistant line at some point as you will see here. And ever since price broke back above last week Thursday, price action has remained above the 151.200 area which beautifully shares a confluence with that ascending trend line. Now, right now, price is back into that key level at the 151.200. And in fact, the last um, 30 minutes or so have been seen by pressure resume around that area. Now, the question as we head into the New York session today is, will price action maintain the momentum above the key level to continue the uptrend move or Considering the fact that price action has broken down the ascending trend line, we may be seeing a sell-off continuation to the downside from here. And you know how we use our key levels in this community. As long as price remains above the key level, we want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying. And we are not going to be considering selling unless the key level is broken to the downside. So. Our center of focus for today is going to be around the key level at the 151.200 area where depending on how market participant will be reacting to the structure will determine what our next line of action will be. Now, the current uptrend which we witnessed yesterday that resulted in price action eating that 151.970 which happens to be the highest level in, let's say, about um, since the beginning of this year, I think, um, may be due to the dovish stance by the Bank of Japan signaling its commitment to maintain accommodative monetary policies for an extended period of time. So what this simply means is that though the, the expectation of pivoting from their current ultra-loose monetary policy is still intact, but they still think that they wouldn't be aggressive about it, which is making um, buyers of safe haven Japanese yen to not feel comfortable holding on to that asset. And we saw how the US dollar capitalized on this to push price to the upside. Additionally, the ongoing US dollar buying driven by uncertainty around the Federal Reserve's projection of interest rate cuts is helping to limit the downside of the USD. JPY. And we saw the Tuesday positive release from the US durable goods order, which indicated a robust US economy potentially prolonging the Fed's decision to um, keep interest rate higher amidst persistent inflation. Now, given these factors, we do want to see how the market is going to be reacting to the 151.200 area today to determine what our next line of action will be. So what I will be doing now is to scale back down into our execution time frame to now see how the market will react to our key level. Now, one thing I would like to emphasize here is that price action is back into that range we identified at the beginning of the week, which was between the 151.430 and the 151.050 area. 
Now, will the support line at the 151.050 area continue to negate seller's attempt just like it did at the beginning of the week to incite an uptrend move? Or are we going to see this area broken to the downside to incite a strong sell off? So for me here, as long as price remains uh, below the 151.200 area, we shall be looking out for selling opportunities and then adding more sell positions at the breakdown of the 151.050 area. Now, if it so happens today, that um, buy pressure resumes just like it did here in the past and considering the um, buying power around this area we cannot ignore this possibility so if buy pressure resumes here i wouldn't be thinking of buying yet unless i see a reversal setup to join that move so if i can see any form of reversal setup be it double bottom structure head and shoulder pattern or a falling wedge how will just mark out the neckline and buy the neckline to the upside. Now, there is a caveat to this bullish traction from this area. That is, if price climbs up, please, as soon as price action gets into this 151.625 and the 151.780 zone, we move all stop losses and secure the buy position. Why is that so? Well, that's a beautiful question if you ask that. Well, we have an ascending trend line here, which was supporting the bullish idea in the last 24 hours. Now, this ascending trend line has been breached and broken to the downside. And from a theoretical perspective, when price action breaks down a key structure like this, we expect price to come back and retest it in an attempt to continue the downtrend move. So if we buy and get to this area, we move all our stop losses, secure the current buy position and wait to see how the market is going to be reacting to this area. Now, if it so happens that the price climbs back above the ascending trend line at the 151.780, then we shall be looking out for more opportunities to buy and hide positions to our existing trade. But if selling pressure persists below the structure, then we are going to be in to join a decline to the downside. So this is my simple view on the USD JPY for today. So I encourage us all to mark out this new trend line and to give a quick summary of what we said here, we will feel comfortable selling below the key level at the 151.200 area and then add more sell positions at the breakdown of the 151.050. But we said here that if any form of reversal setup comes up around this area, we mark out the neckline and join the bullish momentum and ensure we move all stop losses as soon as price gets into this area. We are depending on how market participant reacts to that zone between the 151.780 and the 151.625 will determine if we will be adding more buy positions to our existing trade or get ready to join a decline to the downside. So that is how we are going to be managing these positions today. So I encourage us all to mark out these levels accordingly and let's see how the market will evolve in the next couple of hours then another thing i would like to call our attention to is this now remember that at the beginning of the week we identified this descending trend line here which was broken to give us a signal that buyers are getting stronger now the trend line being broken here um, from a technical standpoint we expect price to come back and retest it and look at what we have here price action is already oscillating right around that ascending descending trend line in the last couple of hours. So let's see what happens here. If this is going to evolve into a reversal pattern, then we are going to be joining a, uh, a bullish traction from that area. So this whole area here around that key level had the 151.200 will be, we shall be looking out for reversal patterns here so let me see let me mark it out here and um, i would like to bolden this a little bit so we are buying a reversal setup if it emerges 
so let's mark it okay so i will thicken it a little bit and make it a little bit bigger to emphasize its importance around this juncture so let's see how the market will play out from here and um, um, tomorrow we shall be reviewing it to guide our next move on this one so this is my simple view on the usdjpy for today if you have any questions feel free to let me know in the comment section so as always i will be taking the next five ten seconds off to see if there are any questions before we move on to the next asset on our watch list for today stay tuned in guys All right, so let's move on to the next asset on our watch list. So the final asset on our watch list for today is my favorite amongst them all, and that is the XAU. USD and in fact we are doing very very well on this particular asset as we took advantage of both buying selling opportunities and in recent time another buy position has been triggered again now for the sake of those who missed out on our earlier sessions and for the sake of educational purposes let's run through what has really been happening in this market since the beginning of this week and of course what led to the decisions we made so right here at the beginning of the week after identifying our key level at the 2145 let me show you that one more time remember right here on the four hours time frame we had this beautiful trading setup right here after considering that strong impulsive move and we saw this uptrend continuation pattern which formed prior to last week's trading session where we were looking out for the breakout of the resistant line of this pattern to join that 
uptrend move and of course we did capitalize on this move last week as we rode it all the way up and then we also joined the rebound in the us dollar all the way to the downside scooping in over a thousand five hundred pips last week now at, at the beginning of this week we emphasized that due to the current situation and considering the fact that price action is still trading above this demand zone between the 2160 and the 2145 it makes a lot of sense for us to look out for buying opportunity and that the only condition that will make us sell around this area is for the demand zone the descending trend line and the key level at the 2145 to be broken to the downside and obviously this never happened but instead we continue to see buy pressure resume around this area at the beginning of this week now this led into a range bound structure which we identified on the one hour time frame so let's go back to the one hour time frame and this is what we saw here at the beginning of the week we saw price started at around the uh, 2164 dollar um, 50 cent level climbed all the way up into the 2178.50 then it dropped back again into that support line giving us a range bound structure to work with at the beginning of the week now when we have a range bound structure you know how we do it in this community we exercise patience and wait for the market to make a decision which will either come in the form of the breakout of the resistant line of that range or the breakdown of the support line of that range to give us an opportunity to trade now if you remember at the beginning of the week we did notice how um, sellers were finding it difficult to break down that support line at the 2164 dollar 50 cent level giving us a sign that we may be seeing price push to the upside from there and for the fact that we had an ascending trend line in place um, we said here that this area may now become a platform for a new highs now with this understanding we quickly identified this level had a 2169 which guided our buy bullish idea for this week so we had our first buy position triggered here and in fact for those who missed out on that opportunity we saw how the market came back to retest the structure in an attempt to continue the uptrend move and lo and behold we were able to maximize the potential of this bullish move by adding more positions at the breakout of levels such as the 2178 dollar 50 cent level the 2185 dollar 50 cent area and finally the 2195 which did not do very well at all so as at yesterday we were already in profit of over 400 pips on multiple buy entries now during our session yesterday i told us all that we will be looking out for how price will react to this area here to decide what our next line of action will be so we said here that um, if price continues to climb and find new highs then we are looking at more opportunities at the breakout of this level but that never happened and i did mention that for those of us who feel comfortable taking counter trend opportunities we might be looking at the breakdown of the 2195 to join a um, the bearish move to the downside and of course you can see this bearish move came in um, giving us over 200 pips in profit here and if you remember vividly what I said here yesterday that once this bearish momentum comes in into this area around this ascending trend line we shall be looking out for um, reversal patterns or signs that buyers are gaining momentum to continue the uptrend move and this was exactly what happened as soon as price came into the structure as we begin to see sellers find it difficult to continue that momentum and i do hope you guys 
move your stop losses accordingly if you are done so you must have been taken out of that sell position with a significant amount of profit so we had the buy position triggered one more time at the breakout of the two thousand one seventy eight dollar fifty cent level and currently if you are taking advantage of that opportunity you should be having a hundred and 60 pips in profit on that one and for those who capitalize on this opportunity as well well done and kudos to you so at this point in time since price action has moved significantly in our favor it is high time we moved all our stop losses and secure this current buy position as we may be seeing another wave of selling pressure begin from this area again so at this point i will suggest that moving your stop losses to that area around the 2190 level makes a lot of sense as we give enough breathing space for price action to move around so with a well secured position with a well secured position at the sorry for the break i had to attend to my little boy here so um we're back again so i said we should move all our stop losses and secure the current buy position as we may see um profit taking activity happen around this area again now one of the reasons why i've said this is simply because if you remember on monday i said that due to the anticipation of the major U.S. macroeconomic data coming up later in the week, we may be seeing an extended sideways trading activities as market participants um, uh, remain cautious in making any aggressive bets ahead of this event. And this may lead into this consolidation phase between that um, 2,195 and the 2,174 for a while before um, that announcement happened. So in that regard, let's secure the current buy position. And um, um, from the U.S. Treasury bond yields, I can I see that the market is still struggling amidst a shift in market sentiment. And we do know how um, the U.S. Treasury bond yield is directly proportional in value to the us dollar so since the us treasury bond yield is not doing very well i still think that the path of least resistance for gold is still looking promising to the upside however um a slightly better than expected us durable goods order yesterday also reinforced the perception of a robust us economy and um, persistent inflationary pressure may prompt the federal reserve to maintain higher interest rate for an extended period of time thereby supporting the u.s treasury bond yield and potentially strengthening the u.s dollar so we can take this possibility out of the picture so that is why we need to be very very cautious and manage this position that we have effectively so please move all your stop losses right now secure this current positions as market participants are probably going to be exercising caution and I'll wait for the clarity on the Fed monetary policy trajectory.
before making significant directional bets. So at this point, attention will be focused on the release of the U.S. personal consumption expenditure, which is coming up on Friday and is expected to heavily influence near-time U.S. dollar price dynamics. Now, given this factor, um, let's see how to manage this position. So to guide our decisions going forward from a technical standpoint, this ascending trend line is going to be playing a major role. And as long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we have no business selling this asset at all. So I would like to extend this ascending trend line a little further into the future so that we can continue to use it to guide our trading decisions. Now, um, if selling pressure resumes around this area, we could see a situation where price could retrace back into the ascending trend line in an attempt to continue an uptrend move. So if price retraces back into the ascending trend line and it forms a reversal setup, let's say a double bottom structure, head and shoulder, or even a falling wedge, then we mark out the neckline that validates it to join that bullish move. However, if price action breaks down this ascending trend line, then at this point, we want to start considering selling this particular asset today. So this is my simple view here. So to guide our bearish buyers on this asset, we are looking at a breakdown of the ascending trend line right there at the $2,180.50 level. And of course, looking at adding more sell positions at the breakdown of the $2,174. Dollar twenty cent. Now there is one thing I would like to state here. Um, this area around the two thousand one ninety five has been a strong selling niche in the past, as you will see here. And when price got into that area yesterday, we saw our price crashed to the downside. Now the price action is back into this area. Let's see if a reversal setup can emerge from here. So what I simply mean now is if we see any form of um, double top structure, we can sell right into this area. Now, it now depends on how market reacts to this trend line will determine if we are going to be adding more sell positions. So right here, I will just label this area sell reversal setup. So we look out for vessel setup around this area. So I'll both in this a little further and then uh, make it a little bit bigger to emphasize its importance around that area. So this is my simple view on the um, XAUUSD for today. So I encourage us all to mark out these levels on our chart as we will be needing them as a reference point to guide our independent trading decisions for today. So let's see how the market is going to play out from this particular area. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I will be taking the next 5-10 seconds off. See if there are any questions before we start rounding off on today's um, session. Thank you very much. See you soon. So I see you, um, Rajas7809, good morning to you. And in the absence of no questions, I uh, want to come to a conclusion that um, we are all on the same page. 
and in that regard we have come to the end of today's um, extra speed technical analysis session and it has been a wonderful moment with you guys i really enjoyed it cannabis um Lam lamgari um carry benny one two three four rike rajesh you guys are just wonderful today and so far we were able to attend to all of the four assets on our watch list which includes the us all sports the us tech 100 the us the jpy and finally my favorite the xau usd and as usual we were able to identify simple trading setups that we will be using to manage our current positions and of course position ourselves for the next move and i do hope you all marked out these levels accordingly as we have illustrated if you have done so well done and kudos to you so all we need to do now is exercise patience and wait for the structures to mature and always remember that every decision we make in the financial market is more or less an educated guess until price action eats your tp target so with this understanding in mind ensure you have a well-defined risk management strategy in place for those who joined us for the first time you guys are wonderful very glad to have you around with us this morning and trust you had a wonderful time and i hope you gained a lot of things during the course of this session if you did you want to be part of our subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us in this community the better you get to understand our analytical approach which eventually will help you to be able to make your own independent trading decisions so it's on this note i want to wish us all the best of luck i look forward to seeing more of you same time tomorrow 10 a.m utc 11 a.m west african time as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and of course prepare for tomorrow's trading session which promises to be another exciting one as everyone looks forward to the gdp data from the united states which obviously is going to be bringing some significant traction to the market and we do want to be on standby to capitalize on this move so i look forward to seeing more of you same time tomorrow and it's on this note i wish us all the best of luck today trade smart tread consciously and do have a wonderful evening everyone bye, -bye.